And now on to our top story tonight. A giant in the Democratic Party I just mentioned is being rocked, rocked by a second allegation of sexual misconduct. The second as many as, de as two days. Congressman John Conyers paid his accuser $27,000 out of a congressional account in 2015 that drove another accuser to depression. The Ethics Committee is already investigating Conyers, but is that enough? And should taxpayers be on the hook for his misdeeds? Here to react is Kimberly Whaley. She's a professor of law at the University of Baltimore and Congressman Ryan Costello, a Republican from Pennsylvania. It's great to see both of you. Happy Thanksgiving and all that jazz. Uh, professor, let's talk to you. Uh, this is some wild stuff. I mean, we have had a, uh, a cavalcade of accusations, some more recent than others, some really old, sweep both Hollywood, business, media, and politics. What is your take on this Conyers issue now that we know he used his own budget, his office budget, to pay some of these settlements? Well, some one thing that's been striking to me is the fact that the, our elected officials are, seem to be less accountable than those in the private sector, right? So we've seen it sweep through Hollywood. We've seen it happen in uh, the halls of co corporate America, and and the retribution is swift, and the people are moved out, and new people moved in, presumably. And the notion is that that. There, there's money at stake, right? And so when it comes to our elected officials, without a, a will to actually remove them from office from, from the voter standpoint, there's really not much that we can do. The Constitution doesn't say much about it. It's Congressman uh, Costello, to you on this. This is what Maxine Waters, uh, Congresswoman Waters, said not too long ago about Congressman Conyers. It was a big woman's forum. Let's watch. There is a member of Congress who has been supportive of women for many, many years. He is quiet, he is confident, he is powerful, but he has impeccable integrity on all of our issues. Give John Conyers a big round of applause. Woo, woo. Oh, I'm just giving him a big round of applause. Impeccable integrity, uh, Congressman Costello. You heard the professor that, look, the Congress seems to have its own set of rules. That's how it's constituted. They govern themselves. Uh, they pass their own ethics uh, rules, internal rules and regulations. But is it time that things begin to change? I mean, a lot of you guys didn't even know this slush shush fund even existed. The short answer is things do need to change. I think that this legislation is a step in the right direction because if you work on Capitol Hill uh, and you've been mistreated, the process that you have to go through in order to file a complaint and have your grievance heard is so opaque, confusing, that it's just not fair. It's not fair and it's not right. And I think the slush fund that you spoke to is sort of indicative of the American public's frustration with, at times, how Congress is governed. They feel that there's a, a different set of rules for members of Congress. And the point here is, look, as a member of Congress, I have a budget. Uh, I pay staff, uh, office supplies, office space, et cetera, et cetera. That money should not and cannot be allowed for use to pay off an employee who may have been mistreated. That has to end. I don't think well, that that's even permitted. Allowed? In, no, Congressman, anyway, is, yeah. my question to you is, is that even allowed? I don't believe is that it, it is, no. Okay, so this will be part of an ongoing ethics investigation into John Conyers. I want you to speak to my, my, my angle that I gave uh, at the top of the show. We got people in Congress who've been there a half a century plus. Now, I think old people, uh, senior people, like we're all getting up there, okay? They have a lot of wisdom. But this was not meant to be a permanent job security program working on Capitol Hill. But we got people up here for three decades, four decades, and in case of John Conyers, five decades. You kind of get removed from the people after five decades. You go from sedan well, to fundraiser I mean to lobbyist to consultant to this and that. And, and the people are, where the heck are the people and all that? That's going to be up to voters unless we have term limits. I mean, right. look, the reality is that that fund, uh, some of that may have been a sex, sexual discrimination claims. A lot of that was workplace violations. Some of it could have been age discrimination, right? So I, it, it, there's a couple different ways to look at that. But I understand the sense of the American people is sometimes members of Congress are there are too long. Obviously, it's up to uh, the constituents in their district to vote them out if they don't want them there. But we're dealing here with a situation where when improper conduct does occur, 
are the mechanisms in place uh, in order to, to right the situation, to treat a young woman who may have been mistreated. And I think that there's a feeling that the mechanisms that are in place now are insufficient. There's, there's not a feeling. transparency. Congressman, Congressman you, you seem like a nice guy, and I'm sure you represent your constituents very well. But as, as a professor was pointing out, I mean, you know, you can't get away with this stuff in, in, in corporate America anymore. At least you shouldn't. And the, yeah. the fact that women are forced into mandatory counseling. And, Professor, I want you to get into that. This is the way the system is now on Capitol Hill. Women who accuse, or men, who accuse others of sexual misconduct, other misconduct, have to go into forced counseling. Mandatory before the days, case can go right, forward. 30 days, right, 30 days. And then there's 30 days of mediation. The counseling should go the you. other way. Yeah, the counseling should I go to the people who are doing the conduct. But, Professor, I want you to weigh you in. No, know, it's true. Well, I mean, it's under, crazy. The, under the Constitution, the way you get rid of members of Congress you is... Vote them out. Uh, well, or under Article 1, you can, the other members of the Senate, can, and the, in the Senate context can actually expel them. Well, that's but, what they're talking about. But it takes, it takes two thirds of the, the Senate to make that decision. And so we're we're talking big numbers. It's, it's highly unlikely. And so what then applies? What applies are the rules that Congress decides to apply to themselves. And that that is what we and have. I, so and, Congressman, and, and, Congressman and I, can you say and tonight I want to strengthen that there the will rules. be... Yeah, but Congressman, I know you didn't write the rules. Grassley did back in 95. No. And I like Senator Grassley. I think he's done a phenomenal job on most issues. But are you going to say tonight that you will fight for removal of mandatory counseling and a, and a confidentiality provision and any future uh, legislation? Because I see there are different versions of this floating around Capitol right. Hill. The, uh, the, the, the legislation that I have would remove the, the mandatory counseling. It would also make a member of Congress personally liable if they engaged in this type of behavior. It would what also about the names? provide. What about the it, names? Do you guys get to keep uh, secret, or uh, we get to uh, know yeah. who we are? Not no, you, no, no, we do. Uh, the, 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 names, the, name, the name of the member of Congress, or if it was someone on their staff, would be included. That would have to be reported within 60 days at the end of a year. Uh, there would also be okay. uh, a survey done every year so that uh, you have staff um, conveying what they feel the culture is on Capitol Hill. Okay, so, uh, so some there's, there's, a lot, there's a lot to this bill. I, I totally agree with what the professor says. Things need to change. The it's bill that I'm a part of would do yeah. that. And, Costel and, and Congressman Costello is part of the, he's a change agent in this, so I don't, I don't mean to come down on you on this, but I, I still can't believe this ever existed on Capitol Hill. It is preposterous on both sides. Men can be victims, women can be victims. Men can be victims of false accusations, and we must say that. There are false accusations, and women can be victims, men can be victims, both can be. But I, I'm glad this is going to change. Professor, thank you. Happy Thanksgiving to both of you. And as we've been discussing, and on